Hello, hello, people of God. God bless you. Come on, just join the room. Jump on in, friends. We are starting this week fresh in the fire and the glory of God. I'm so excited because in a few minutes, we are going to have worship artist extraordinaire, the one and only Jake Hamilton. He truly is a prodigy. We're going to have him come up in a few minutes. But guys, comment below where you're watching from. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall because this is going to be exciting. I mean, you know, me and Brother Jake, uh, you know, it's like we, we go quite back and we've done a number of things together. So it is going to be an awesome broadcast. But today we're going to talk about worship and warfare. Have you been experiencing some warfare? Have you been undergoing some delay or sabotage or just some unusual attacks against your spirit, your joy, your happiness? But friends, on this broadcast, myself and uh, Brother Jake, we're going to just go after this and we're going to release the glory of God over you. Who knows? Maybe even Jake Hamilton will release a prophetic song over you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But friends, I want you to just jump in. Comment below where you are watching from. Let's build up the algorithms. Let's build up this atmosphere in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And comment below where you are watching from. Tag somebody. Share this on your wall. I see Redding, Claudia Hayden from Redding. Jonestown, Pennsylvania. Melissa Schmidt says, I'm super excited for this. DD Worship Warfare delays. Hallelujah. Sherry. I mean, yesterday, guys, I missed church yesterday. I'm a pastor. Please forgive me. But I missed church yesterday because my six-hour flight from Grand Junction, Colorado to L.A. took 18 hours yesterday. And believe it or not, but I got home yesterday at 2 a.m. So, I mean, that is a major delay. And you know what? I looked online today. There were two American airlines that caught on fire yesterday. Two American. Their engines blew up. And so... Praise God, I was not on one of those. But So God is breaking off the spirit of delay. God is breaking off warfare. And we want to encourage you. And we want to give you a prophetic perspective and revelation on how worship will break and change the atmosphere. Amen. But friends of God, let's build up the atmosphere for another minute or so. Let us know where you are watching from. Hallelujah. I know we got a YouTube friends jumping on as well. Good to see you, Cynthia Deshini from the Navajo Nation. Leo Bangtaliri from South Africa. Bless you. Sarah Molere from Montreal, Canada. Juan Martinez, good to see you, my friends. Child of Most High. Hallelujah. Yes, we are live here on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Landry Skeet. You are a musician, so you are going to appreciate this. Nigeria, God bless you. Vicky Shalom. London in the house. Prophet Zivana from Hollywood. Hallelujah. Pastor Sharon, God bless you. Well, friends, I want you to give the man of God a great round of applause as we welcome the one and only worship artist extraordinaire, Jake Hamilton. Bless you, brother. Welcome to the broadcast. Hey, it's good to be here. Thank you so much. You know, I love hanging out with you. So it's always a pleasure and a privilege. Seriously. No, ab absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, we've done a number of events the last few years, and I just feel like our bond as brothers is just getting closer and closer. So we love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. And we're so excited to have you here today. Stoked, man. And I, I feel your travel woes. Yesterday, I was traveling for 15 hours, 16 hours, getting back from St. Thomas with a group of men out there doing some serious soul work. And um, it was in a beautiful place, but we were doing some really hard work. So I feel you, travel woes. Uh, we got, in fact, our, tr our flight was not going to make it at all. I was supposed to get stuck in Chicago. And so even when you were saying that, I was like, I can totally relate. We, in the last minute, favor of God, praise God, we literally ran over to a flight that was delayed 15 minutes off of St. Thomas, got on, got home last night, even earlier than we were supposed to. So I just, uh, I totally feel you, man. Yesterday was a long travel day. <laughs> wow. Well, thanks for saying yes and committing to doing this broadcast just right after a big trip. We appreciate well, that. Absolutely. You know, I'm in for it all the time. Come on. So good. And we're going to be having you here in Southern California 
this coming week for our Open Heavens Power and Glory Conference. Come on. Be back in like what feels like my hometown. You know, we grew up just a little bit of ways away, but Orange County, man, like I believe God has something so, I mean, some of our first encounters with the prophetic, with the Holy Spirit, all of those things happened in the Laguna area, the uh, Orange County area. So seriously, like I'm, I love coming back and serving that area and that region as much as I can, because it's, it's given my family and me so much of our history. Wow. So good. So good. And, and now you're based in Reading, which of course, you know, Reading has blessed, benefited the world, the charismatic move so much for the last decade and two decades. So it's incredible, man. We can't wait to have you. It's going to be a powerful, exciting week. Well, um, let's jump right into this, Jake, because uh, firstly, I love what you're doing on social media. I mean, you've always been a huge uh, promoter, fighter for truth, just realness, rawness for family, for marriage, yeah. holiness, you know, and of course, your story, your testimony is all about that. But I love a lot of the stuff you and your wife, uh, you guys are, are posting on Instagram. Guys, you need to follow Jake on Instagram. His stuff <laughs> is awesome. Why don't you talk to us just about just, you know, I think it's called the Fight Broadcast, Fight Podcast, isn't it? Yeah. We, uh, we basically started the fight about uh, three or four years ago, but prior to that, we were doing something called One Flesh, which was focused on marriage. Um, long story short, I've been in ministry since I was 20 years old. Some of you guys know the story. You can watch all of it in detail on all the podcasts and on YouTube videos, so I don't need to rehash that here. But the long story short was I was a workaholic in ministry, so people really get celebrated when you're a workaholic and you're doing it for Jesus. So um, it's, it, you look more like a hero than you do like somebody who probably needs something to get fixed. So um, basically, we, I, you know, 10 years into our marriage, almost my wife was like, this is not okay. Like something's not working here. Um, we were married into ministry. Like really, we started ministry together from the very beginning of our relationship ended up fracturing after I played one of the largest places I had played at the time for Jesus Culture Chicago. People bring it up all the time. I mean, when I played the anthem at Jesus Culture Chicago, I felt like the Lord was literally showing me what he promised me when I was 18 years old, when he told me I'd write songs that the whole world would sing. And I'm standing in front of this arena, 17,000 people going like, you know, oh my gosh, they're singing this song back to me. It was written in a closet in a Baptist church, basically. And all of a sudden I have this song that's being like, you know, shouted back to me and people's lives are being transformed by the lyrics of these, of these songs. And um, the next morning, my marriage fell apart. I was sitting with Chris Valentin and Chris and my wife was like, this isn't a marriage. You're like, you're literally more, you're married to ministry. You're not married to me. I feel like, and I realized, oh, I've got to divorce my workaholic tendency tendencies in ministry or any job. Like it's not just ministry, but divorce my workaholic tendencies so that I can be married to my wife and she gets the fullness of our attention. The reason I'm even sharing all that and the reason we started what we're starting or what we started years ago is because we started being in a bunch of green rooms. You know, I was leading worship. My family was traveling with me at the time. And we'd say, yeah, here's how our marriage, we're super open. So our marriage fell apart. It was all trash. This is what happened. You know, it was terrible. And we're trying to work things out. We're still figuring it out. And all the pastors would be like, Oh yeah. Yeah. That's the cool. Cool. Can we talk to you afterwards? You know, and it was like, yeah, absolutely. So we started having a bunch of backroom conversations with leaders about where their family actually was, where they were in their relationship and their marriage and with their kids. Again, trying to fast forward and leave out a bunch of details. As we were doing that, we came a, a guy named Alan Hood out of the International House of Prayer in Kansas City. We sat with him. He's an amazing dad, amazing like husband, like just someone who's really fought for family, like with in the shadows. Nobody even knows he's doing that work. But he sat us down and said, if you really want to save marriages, you got to get men. And it was like, that was the key for us because my boys were just about turning sort of age of initiation. They're, ro they're rolling up into preteen years. And so I turned my entire focus to my boys, which ended up flowing over into um, men. Like we just started working directly with men because even just, you know, we knew the statistics. The statistics are simple, man. Like um, that if the man stays, the, the marriage has a 90% chance of course correcting even without therapy or any help simply if the man decides he's going to stay in the house and do the work of loving his family regardless of what he gets out of it when that happens the marriage has like like i said almost a 90 percent chance of just reconciling just 
just by a man becoming a stabilizing force inside of his home. And I'm like, to me, to end that whole rant that I just gave you, I thanks for the question. But the rant is simply this, that when we accept the model of Jesus as manhood, like he's the model of masculinity and manhood inside of our home, and that becomes our first ministry, we actually change one man, which is one marriage, which is one generation at a time. And we can right. actually watch the generational flow of blessing happen when we choose to do the work now and not when it all falls apart. Like we can get ahead of it by learning to do this work now, whether we've been married 10, 20, 30 years, or we just got married or we plan on getting married in the future. So we're watching that work happen. And my wife and I are just, we're in it together to see it happen. That's why all the silly videos and the stuff we're sharing is we're just trying to get people involved in the conversation of this is what kingdom on earth looks like. Wow. That's so good. Yeah. I know there's, there's so much history and passion and, and one thing about you is, you know, you're super passionate and you're super vocal about what you're passionate about. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know you personally, you love your boys, you love your family, you know, you fight for your family all the time. And, uh, uh, you know, so like sharing that backdrop of your story and history, uh, is just super important for a lot of our new audience here today. But, you know, years ago I wrote a book called men of valor, and I did a conference called Men of Valor, and you actually wrote an endorsement for that book. Yeah. And who would have known, I mean, who, like, seriously, who would have known that today in 2023, a book like that would be even more needed and essential, or that there would be such a war on gender and identity yeah. and sexual identity and really on masculinity and even on women today? Yeah, and I, what's crazy about it for me is, uh, look, and this is, again, not the expressed, like, opinion of Ben Lim Ministries. This is just Jake Hamilton's opinion, okay? So let me let me put that out there before I say this. But for me, I believe, like, we're blaming government for things that began in the church. See, we're the conscience of the church, of, the, of culture. We are the conscience. We're the soul. We're the one carrying kingdom. We can't yell at people who aren't believers and demand that they act like believers. We can't address satanic systems and wish they were Christian. We have to be the model in culture so that society transforms because they found something better in us. When we're the ones just pointing the finger and complaining, we're not really the presence of healing in culture. We're actually more divisive than we'd like to admit. And I think by doing some of this stuff, like when what I mean by that is I mean that in the church, we don't even know what a man and a woman is supposed to do or supposed to be. What's a husband do? What's a, what's a man do? When do you become a man? Like, when do I cross from boyhood into manhood? Like, when in the church are you walking me through that? Where are the wise old men who used to carry young people into the fullness of their identity? Like, I'm not trying to teach you into that. I'm going to walk you into that with more than just a hunting trip. This is like something that's so much more, uh, has carries so much more depth and so much more weight that we need to be paying attention to. And when we don't know how to define that in the church, we don't know what marriage is. We don't know why it's important. We don't fight for it. We don't fight for it identity, it just ripples effects across culture. And then we just complain about it. And I think there's so much opportunity to go, let's, let's give clear lines of what a man is and what a woman is, what a husband is, what a father is, what a son is, what a daughter is, what that looks like in the kingdom. What are the models? What do we live out? And then when we live from that place with such authenticity and authority, it reverberates back into culture and standards that have been off course for years, get course corrected simply because we became, again, the soul or the conscience of a culture. Wow, so good. You're definitely preaching at me, and I am saying amen and hallelujah in my spirit. <laughs> I mean, it, it's incredible just the battle today. And, and honestly, Jake, I mean, we've been seeing kids, young kids, just getting rocked with the Holy Ghost, having extreme manifestations of deliverances, like demons coming out multiple demons we're seeing these kids get drunk in the holy ghost like so they're laughing so hard that their sides are, are hurting and you know i mean it's incredible but there's such an attack and a war on our children today and even in america you got you know the the leftist woke ideologies you know that are trying to indoctrinate our kids you know into being bi bi binary or non-binary whatever that means and you know all this transgenderism but the truth will remain, and God is raising up a new breed of sons and daughters that are going to rise up 
with the word of God and are going to move in the glory of God. Yeah, and I think the big deal is, honestly, we don't, and again, it's just Jake's opinion. I, I don't think we need, we don't need better teaching on this. We actually just need mom and dads who show up. If you want me to make this as simple as possible, give me a mom and dad who show up. Like we've been so overpromised by Christian charismatic culture that they can't deliver on. Like stop using the word family to mean Sunday morning or big event. That's not a family. A family shows up when you need to like move your furniture or you like need help financially. You know what I mean? Like these are the things that like a mom and a dad show up to do the hard day to day boring work. And I feel like, and I'm, I'm down with all the other stuff. I'm just saying family is actually that, that day in day out connection, mundane, boring. I'm here for you. And we don't need the over promising. We don't need better theology on this. We actually just need mom and dad wise elders who show up for children when it sucks and benefits them nothing. Wow. All right. Uh, this, this is opening up another conversation. And guys, if you're enjoying this, give us some hearts and likes. Let's build up the algorithm. I know me and Jake, we're kind of in a personal conversation. So welcome to this green room, right? Welcome <laughs> to the living room. Um, let's talk about fathering and mothering in a ministry context, because I'm sure you've experienced it. I've experienced it so much where I, I I thought these leaders should be fathers and mothers of the faith because they're generals, they're famous, they have these platforms, but they're walking totally opposite of what the father will do or what a mother and father would do. Let's talk about that. Yeah, there's this, again, we're in a, there's, there's, let me say it from the very beginning. There are very few people with malicious intent in these positions. So these are not evil. There's no one who's true. It's really, really important to know that when you're disappointed or hurt by a leader, it most 99.9% .9 of the time is not a person who's maliciously trying to hurt you. We've just bought into to systems and expectations that allow people to fail us in ways that have already hurt us most. And so for me, there's this old sort of way of looking at it where they said we that specifically for men, we were born with a crown that's too big for our heads. This is sort of the story version. We were born with a crown that's too big for our heads. So we look in our lives to someone who will hold it for us until we're big enough to wear it ourselves. And that used to be in culture, we would have kings and queens, literal, you know, I mean, there was monarchies and there was, you know, even, even in our presidential office, there was this space of like, I'm not just being a good president, I'm actually being a good role model for culture, you know? And so we could look at these big images, you know, pastors and priests and leaders and, and we'd go, can you hold my crown? Like, can you, can you just hold this for me until I'm big enough? And we could trust them. But there isn't much of that anymore. It's been fractured. It's been wow. painfully broken by um, massive acts of mistrust and uh, just outright deceit in a lot of ways. And what happens is we have to stop saying that people that we listen to on a podcast or read their books are our spiritual mothers and fathers. That language is terrible. Just, just FYI, because they, they can't mother or father you. It's impossible. That's not real. Like I, when I'm saying mothering or fathering, I, I understand that Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. We really do only have one father. We only have one model. That's it. That's what Jesus says. Call no one father except for the father, which I love that. And Paul, though, he says, now come follow me as I follow Christ. Basically saying, hey, listen, I'm going to set a roadmap with my life that gives you opportunity to assess your life well. So when you see my life, it's not because I'm your leader, your father, your, your mentor, your guru. No, you're going to see my life and be inspired by it in such a way that you'll go, oh, I see a different way that's possible for me to lead. When I match my life up to a life that inspires me, I can now assess my life properly based on I'd like to be more like that. Take, like we can take any leader, you know, any prophetic voice, you know, that I've been around before, you know, you've got a Todd White, Todd White, massive evangelist, awesome gift of evangelism, super inspiring. Now, he's not the end all be all model in evangelism. He is a man who gives you one perspective and inspires you. He's not yeah. going to be your spiritual dad. 
because he can't actually do that. I love leading worship. I am a worship leader. I lead stadiums. And I'm going to inspire you to assess your life based on the language I'm using and the life I live. But I'm not going to spiritually father you. Bill Johnson ain't going to do that. Randy Clark ain't going to do that. C. Jacobs ain't going to uh, Heidi Baker. I love all of these people. These are amazing men and women of God. They should inspire you to be able to assess your life based on some of the things they're saying and doing. Let's get rid of the language that says they're a spiritual mother or a spiritual father. These are men and women. Like you said, I love the language you use. These are generals of the faith. Well, generals don't like go hang out with the troops most of the time. What they're doing is they're leading a charge by giving out maps and directions that will help win wars and help win battles. A dad shows up and carries you through the hard time and puts bandages on your hurts and lets you know how to assess your hurts well in your everyday boring life so that you get identity. That's way different than the guy who's inspiring you. That, and I, I really think it's important for us to know the difference because I meet so many people who are like, yeah, Bill Johnson's my spiritual father. And I'm like, oh, dude, I didn't even know you knew him. He's like, no, I just through podcasts and books. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, that's not. That I, first of all, you're telling on yourself because what I know now is that you didn't have a good dad in your life and your dad probably rejected you and abandoned you. So even Bill Johnson, who's like a million miles from where you live and how you would ever connect with them, feels closer than the dad you were born to. Mm. And that to me breaks my heart. That's what breaks my heart mm. because we should be raising up natural mothers and fathers who know how to love their natural sons and daughters in a way that that reverberation affects the church and the way we connect with one another. Uh, that's so good. So deep. It's so good. And, uh, and uh, again, it's weird because of, of course people are fathers and they are mothers, but are they your father? Are they your mother? Apostle Paul said, there's many teachers. Listen, there's so many YouTube influencers, teachers today uh, uh, of information, but who's actually there to discipline you, to smack you around, to, give you the hard nitty gritty stuff. And they're, they're actually there to cover you and to walk with you. And, and that's real and that's relational. And God wants real. Uh, he, he doesn't want transactional. He wants real family. And uh, so I believe that there is, in a sense, a cleansing of false expectations and even manipulation because there's been so much coercion and manipulation. You're my son. You're my, it's like, how is that? Did you labor in their birthing pains like apostle paul did you know right. I mean, I'll tell you what, there's a there's a this is how you'll know the difference a real dad under promises and over delivers that's good a false father will over promise and under deliver and wow. you will be left with disappointment like when a real father shows up and under promises and over delivers you're always left with hope when you meet somebody who's just trying to manipulate, just trying to control, focused on the transactional, you are absolutely every single time going to leave with disappointment. Mm, that's good. So good. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, let's talk about worship. We went deep into that. <laughs> All right. Sorry. We're, we're on a tangent, guys. Welcome to the living room. Um, well, let's talk about worship and warfare, Jake, because... I sense a lot of people are experiencing warfare on their mind, spiritually, maybe in their dreams. I know whenever it's around Passover and we just pass Passover, uh, there's a big transition spiritually. You know, uh, Passover, of course, is the beginning of a new year in the Jewish calendar. We have left Egypt. We've been we've died with Christ. We've born, risen again. So there's a lot going on. And the last few weeks. A lot of people I've been talking to, they're just feeling odd, off, weird, they're like something's just off. And of course, I've been mentoring them, speaking to them. And even for myself, I know something needed a shift in my own life, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But worship and warfare, let's talk about the power of worship and how worship breaks warfare. And and even, you know, uh, what are your thoughts on warfare? I know that's a loaded question. Wow, there was like a lot. Of <laughs> back at you now. <laughs> so context is for me, I led a house of prayer like that was like 24-7 for 
uh, almost three years. So we wow. in Southern California, like we did this, like I was leading worship for six to eight hours a day. You know, I'm, that's why people see me change strings. People are always like super impressed because they saw me like change strings in the middle of my worship set because I broke a string yeah. and all that stuff. And, um, and I'm like, no, that's because that was necessity. I learned how to do that stuff because I was leading for, you know, four, six, eight hours. I would just lead and lead and lead. And we would read the word, pray the word, sing the word. That was just it. Basic model. I know I helps model is way, way, way more um, intense and a lot more specific on how they do that. We just didn't have a ton of people. We just kind of went for it. And it was just read the word, pray the word, sing the word. And um one of the first books I actually got on warfare, I actually pulled it out because I knew this conversation. But if you guys don't have this book, the EM Bounds Prayer and Spiritual Warfare, this book is insane. Like I just I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, but for me, um, a lot of this was like I became the warfare guy and I didn't realize what was happening. You know what I mean? Because I'm like loud and aggressive and I'm just like I'm going to go in hard you know like i'm i recognize that when i show up to a space i'm not the guy who's supposed to come and lead worship like i i get that that's part of what i do mm. my job and responsibility through who jake hamilton is is to break open atmosp atmospheres at all cost that's good like this is my job i'm gonna go to war against any ide ideology or religious system that's in the room that's hindering people from connecting with who God actually is, not what somebody else has told them. Like, I want you to experience the fullness of your authentic expression with God, to, to encounter him the way you were meant to encounter him. That's why I'm like, I don't have anything to prove. Like, I'm like, I don't care if anyone likes my music because that's actually not my job. The music, we have to remember that worship um, like is not music, which we say all the time, but yeah. we don't really, that's not really true. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we say it constantly, but we don't live that. You know what I mean? If I was to go like, go into a room and go, okay, let's worship. What does everybody automatically assume? They automatically assume yeah. I'm going to sing, which is not a terrible thing. I'm not saying we should like, they're not, they're not complete polar opposites, but we've done such a disservice to our, our culture of Christianity when we've associated so deeply in our brains and in our hearts yeah. that I'm not doing worship unless there's a melody. Uh, uh, all right, Jay, I know you're on this. I'm just pulling out these Please. questions right now. This is so good. Um, but as you are about to lead a worship, do you ever feel warfare? Like, you know, some people are more sensitive. Some people are, you know, more feelers, quote unquote. Um, you know, of course, we're always praying. Like, do you ever like feel warfare? And what do you do, you know, to kind of shift or break open the atmosphere as Jake Hamilton? There are plenty of times. I think that most people, when they're experiencing what they would call warfare, is an attack on their identity. Okay, so yep. do I really believe who I am? And do I really believe what I believe about God? And now I'm going, because as a leader, I can only give you where I am. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't care about any of the other hype teachings on this stuff. For me, as a leader, I can only give you where I am. I can only give you what I personally have experienced with God. And I can only take you so far into God as I've been willing to go myself. So most of the time, what would be, uh, what I would consider language like on warfare would be really an attack on my identity. Do I really believe those things? Because that's really the cycle that I get in my head for everybody that's listening. Like I still get into a place every time I'm leading, I literally go through the same experience, which is, am I good enough to lead this room? And I don't yep. mean good enough in talent. I mean, good enough in heart. Am I, am I pure enough? Am I, am I really being as authentic as I can? Cause authenticity to me means everything. Yep. Everything is about authentic because authenticity is real authority. And, authenticity and, in a room. Yeah. And what, which I agree. And that's why Jesus said, repent, you know, because for the kingdom of heaven is here. It's all about the mind, right? right? We pull down spiritual strongholds from our minds. Go ahead. Yeah, and I think, and I think what you're bringing up, Ben, too, is so good because what what I, the way that I address it is I show up. 
And I think so many times what we end up doing is going, oh, I've got to work through this. I've got to, oh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to enter into worship, but, you know, I'm trying to enter into the song. I'm trying to enter into the lyrics. I'm trying to enter into praise. And I'm trying to do those things. But, you know, there's so much going on. No, literally. And it's there's a difference between delusion and fantasy, which is it doesn't exist. God is good. That's delusional and fantasy. That That's not real. That's not warfare. <laughs> that's just delusion. Okay. Yeah. It still exists. It's still happening. There's stuff happening in my life, but I'm choosing something else. That's yeah. different. I'm Good. not, I'm, I'm saying this exists and I'm still choosing him. That's when real worship in a room happens. And real worship breaks into everyday people's lives. When I don't ignore my experience, I actually accept where I am and choose him anyway. That's when worship breaks out. That's when breakthrough happens. Not when I ignore it. And I feel like that's not faith. We keep teaching people, you know, well, we're just going to fake it till we make it. That is the opposite of faith. Faith says we don't fake it at all. We show up with our junk, put our junk on display and then choose him anyway. That doesn't require a song. A song just sometimes helps as the catalytic moment and gives us language that we didn't have prior to that experience. That's why I think songs are important because because mm. authentic songs, not just trite pop worship music. Yeah. I'm talking about not just singable choruses. I'm talking about the crap that breaks through a room because it is so real and raw that I have to deal with myself before God when I sing it. Wow. That's the kind of music I'm looking for. And a lot of times it doesn't show up in what we sing in church on Sundays. Come on. You know, and that's what's so hard. I've, you, you, I've had this conversation with you before. I've met so many worship leaders and I'm like, hey, what's going on with your life? Oh, my life's falling apart. Everything's going crappy and there's this and this going on and you know, and blah, blah. I'm like, okay, what kind of music are you listening to? Oh, I really love cigarettes. I'm really into electronic. I really love this sort of bassy stuff, these kind of things. I'm like, okay, now let me hear a song you're writing. And it's like, you're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. I'm like, wait, okay, that is the most inauthentic thing I've ever heard because you just told me all that you're going through. You told me that the sound that inspires you, that God hardwired into you to move you, is this. And then you wrote something over there because you think it's gonna get you likes or views or, or, you know, get you numbers. Like, how, like, we're asking people to walk into the room and be authentic, but I won't do it from the platform. Mm. I won't write, I won't write lyrics because that's what's so hard about singing a thousand other people's songs and having a massive worship movement because now I literally don't have to write anything. Jesus. But yet every culture on planet earth is completely different based on the place they are, the leadership they have and the people that show up. So who's writing to that room? Mm. who's writing to that culture? Like, I understand we want a piece of Bethel's culture and there's language there or there's IHOP's language or there's this song or this, you know I mean? These people, I get that. That is helpful to start. If we are still 20 years later only singing the songs that somebody else gave us, we yeah. are not an authentic culture yet. So good, so good. Uh, again, guys, I'm sure you can see how passionate Jake is right now. He he is preaching to the choir right here, and I, I love it um, because this is your life. You've been in this. You've been in the rooms. You, you've you been in the music industry, the worship, uh, Christian music industry, and that's why I just love your heart and your authenticity in this. Um, let me ask you, Jake, uh, what about seasons of warfare? Okay, seasons of warfare. Have you experienced seasons of warfare and what 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 was that what was that like how did you break through that you know what was it the time with you and nikki with the marriage was that your most difficult season of warfare but um let, let's talk about uh you know warfare and how you dealt with that or what that looks like for you yeah i think like i what i would say is the thing that where i'm at now is that I love the word you use because the word the word there that actually is is so helpful is the word seasons 
Because when we actually understand that most of the Bible is written about seasons, and we're talking about natural and spiritual seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. So if I can identify what season I'm in, I can accept it for the beauty it's bringing. So let's just talk about like my season with Nikki, which again, you can watch all the details of it online. But the reality is that was a very sort of dark night of the soul, reassessing my entire value system. What do I believe about God? Another season like that was my daughter getting diagnosed with cerebral palsy. It's like this dark night of the soul, this question of who is God? Like, where are you? I love there's this old story, Parsifal and the quest for the grail. And I love that, like, he's in his most disappointing moment. Moment, and he's walking away from King Arthur's table and behind him, King Arthur shouts, go with God. And there's this line where, where Parsifal literally says, who is God? Because mm. that's the way it feels. Because it feels like once we get into that space and we're leaving the king's table, we're all of a sudden in this space where it's like, but who is he now? Because it's so hard to see. But then you have, that's like a winter, right? So you have winter. And then all of a sudden, if you do winter well, Spring starts to show up. There's new growth. You can see the flowers on the trees. That the promise of fruit to come, right? Because fruit isn't, it's not blooming yet. All you see is the little, like we have trees in our fruit trees in our backyard. And you, I love right out. It's, we've had so much snow and rain this last season. And all of a sudden, just on the trees, you see little buds, little green, little flowers start to bloom. And they're not, that's not fruit. It's the promise of fruit to come. And for us, when we're in these seasons of warfare, what we can turn to, we turn to the promises that, that are true. We, turn, we return to truth. What has he actually said? Like, what is God? That's why for me, I mean, I wish I, I have it here somewhere in my office. I wish I had it for you. I wrote out, you could see it. I've written out on a giant like paper that I carry with me is like, it's every prophetic word I've ever gotten that was significant and life-changing. I have them mapped out on like a giant thing that I carry around. It's like you unfold it, you know, and here it is. And it's like, I literally, anytime I'm in that season, I return not to what I believe now, but what he said yesterday. And now we do that with scripture, right? Like, I love that, but I want it to be personal. Like, what has he actually said to Jake Hamilton? And if we're not writing those things down and we're just sort of like, you know, prophetic junkies just looking for the next word, but we didn't do anything with the last 20 we got, like, I wonder what he would do if we stewarded them. I wonder those, he's giving us weapons. He's giving us weapons to use in times of warfare that we can show up and go, well, I feel this way here, yeah. but he said this. That's good. So weapons of warfare, the Bible says, uh, weapons of righteousness, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're spiritual. What are your weapons of warfare, Jake? I mean, you've been in this and for what, 30, 30, 20, 30 years, maybe? Um, almost 30. <laughs> We're, I'm getting old. It's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go, Dad. Uh, yep. but, but also, like, have you felt or seen maybe your weapons change in different seasons? I will tell you this, the one that has stayed, and I think somebody just wrote it down on Facebook, journaling is key. Yeah. That's, I mean, journaling for me has been absolutely a necessity. Like, mm -hmm. that's not a joke. Like, to me, I feel like if you're going to walk out faith properly, you need to write stuff down. Like, you need to, and I'm not talking about, dear diary, <laughs> and every day you have to have like this. I'm saying stream of consciousness, you wake up and just write things down. And then when something significant happens, you have a history of it with a date, with a time. And you actually can look back. People do it in their phones. I, I like paper. I like pens. You can do this in your phones. Journaling has been a non-negotiable because I want to remember what he said and when he said it. And then I take, I take my paper ones and then I take pictures of them and put them in Evernote so that I can store them digitally. And I can actually search because Evernote can search your written words. So I can actually search through my journals digitally just through wow. pictures and images on Evernote. I know there's some other resources out there, but for those that haven't done journaling, I have journals all the way back to when I was 16, dude. Like I have a history of my journey with God. I have it written down the day I met my wife. I have it written down the first word that God gave me. I have it written down. I know I, it's not, no more is it divine imagine. No, no more is it just what I made up 
or hype. I can go back to the actual language of what he said, not what I remember, not what I think he said. I can go back to it. And those are weapons. When I forget what he said or forget who I am or forget who he is, I can go back to his word, which is the written word, you know, and I can go back to the spoken word. Those two words, that dude, that is unstoppable, right? Like that's, to me, that's been step one since I was 16, 17. Like, I mean, at, by the time I was 18, I was journaling on a regular basis. I have hundreds of journals, boxes of them that I still have. I, I'm a big journaler myself. And uh, I, I call it, you know, talking with God. That's how I talk with the Lord a lot, especially when I'm stressed or I need to process, uh, you know, and and that's also one of the top habits of multimillionaires and billionaires, which is journaling. Right. So go figure. Be a scientist. Be a scribe. Part of it is a part of it is psychologically, I'm getting it out of my physical body because when it stays in my head and my heart, I'm only I'm only hearing that internal voice that has a ton of opinions. When I actually make it physical and I put it on a piece of paper and I write it down, that's a game changer because I'm getting it out of my body and I have to look at it. So I'm actually looking at, do I really think this? Do I really believe this? And do I actually, is this how I'm actually processing? So much, so many of our fights, even in our marriage have been completely just negated or like kind of resolved by me just journaling for an hour. Because I'll go and write down all the things that I'm mad. Oh, I'm mad at this, mad at this. Oh, I'm frustrated with this. Oh, you know, and done that with God. God's this. God, you you suck. You're this. And you let me down here and you hurt my ear. And, and you're like, get to the end of it. And I feel like that's the psalmist, right? You get to the end of it, and, but yeah. you're still awesome. And I have yeah. a lot to work on. And thank you for letting me do this. <laughs> so good. How, how, how much of the percentage of your journals are more of the complaining rather, rather than you know, the revelation, right? <laughs> right. It's like this, it's a good mix of both. You know, I've got my rants and my revelations all in one, one, one spot, you know? And I think that's, what's so beautiful about being a man after God's own heart, like being in that divinic nature oh. is I can rant with the same authority. I can revelate because I know he's my dad. Like there's, there's no reason why I can't rant at him. My kids, I mean, dude, I got teenagers, dude. I got teenage boys. They're like, you suck, dad. Do you think it like moves me where I'm like, oh, oh my God, maybe I do suck. Maybe I am, you know? No, it's, there's are my teenage boys. Of course, they're supposed to, they're supposed to give me that aggressive energy. My job as a dad is to hold that space long enough for them to find redemption in it. That's what I do as a dad. That's what he does with me. That's why we should be singing songs about the process. That's why we should be writing songs about the process, praying in our process. We want all these self-righteous prayers and self-righteous songs that are fully resolved. I want open-ended music, open-ended prayers, open-ended songs and melodies so that everyone that walks into the room knows it's okay to still be a seeker all the way to the end, regardless of whether you've walked with Jesus for 40 years or 40 minutes, because we're all seekers forever in this. Like there's no date of arrival until I actually see him. So yeah. just because I have the microphone doesn't mean I've arrived. Yeah. Personally, you know? I, I, I don't like songs where it's like, it's a little too mushy and it's a little, woe oh. is me, you know, to me, it feels like it's like, and again, it's suffering, right? I mean, you look at the book of Job, right? And some people have a theology uh, where it's, it's so focused on suffering. They're almost sadistic. They're almost, they're like monks. And listen, I'm Korean. Okay. We embrace suffering. All right. We preach suffering as Koreans, right? But then it seems like there's a lot of music that, I don't know, just kind of focuses on suffering and woe is me, I'm a little worm. And, right. you know, it's, it, it, it usually sounds very country, you know, those type of songs, right? Uh, but that doesn't connect with me because, right. you know, I, I'm, I'm a warrior. I'm, I'm victorious. You know, I'm, I'm a man. Give me a challenge, but we'll take it out. Right. And I think that's that's the marriage of both. The marriage of mystery and tension is I'm going to admit that this is hard and then I'm going to keep moving forward. So courage, you know, it's been said a million times, courage is not having no fear. It's knowing what you're afraid of and doing it anyway. That's how like for me, the music that most connects with my heart is it identifies the radical issue of 
of suffering and pain and sacrifice, but gives me the redemptive value of pressing through and calling me to a higher standard than my circumstance. Because if the song doesn't call me to a higher standard than my circumstance, I actually miss out on tons of transformation. And whatever is not transformed in our lives will be transferred. So I can only give you what I have. So I need to see the redemptive value in the music. I need to see the redemptive value in the songs. But I need to admit that this is how hard it is. This is, and a lot of it is yeah. super sentimental and romantic, which is why you lose a ton of guys in the in the process. Because like, I don't know how to sing this authentically. I don't say these things to my wife, and I'm supposed to be saying them to a man. Like, there's a massive disconnect for masculine men who walk into space and go. I don't really know how to do the effeminate worship thing. And honestly, we're like, and you have to. And I'm like, uh, I don't know if that's true. You know, like, I actually do think we need songs that call us to war and pro yeah. and give the promises of God as breakthrough that actually show us who he is in spite of what I'm experiencing currently. That's so good. And uh, I remember I had a conversation with Dr. Roberts Lairdon. He's the author of God's Generals. And Dr. Roberts was sharing how, you know, there's so many songs today, like the worship movement has become about the daddy movement. You know, it's like the daddy bride, right? Where yeah. it's just, it's mushy gushy and he loves us guys. I mean, that song transformed all of our lives, right? But it's like the whole worship movement had become, become about this daddy God movement. When, what about the other side of, of war, aggression? warfare spiritual battle you know and we've right. lost a lot of that side where we're kind of becoming like i mean and there's a feminine and a masculine side of god but we've lost this side and we need it today more than ever before well i think that's what you brought up a great like when we said he loves us like how he loves like john mark millen dude the song was written about the death of his friend that's why the song is so impactful wow it's literally written there's a third verse to that song that nobody sings because it's written about his friend wow and it's on the day stephen died you know like he literally says it and he can't get through it if you listen to the original recording he just weeps through the third verse because he's writing it from a from the perspective of his friend who's in heaven who's looking down and telling everyone you have no idea how he loves us that's, that's what he's writing that song from. In the midst of devastation, I've seen a man. Mm. That, that's the breakthrough. Like you wanna break through warfare? You wanna break through chains in your life? Admit where you're at and then, then uh, declare over it who he is. That's the win. The win is admitting and declaration, honesty and responsibility. Like, I have to believe who he is, but I have to admit where I am. And I don't see the marriage very often. That's where the disconnect is and why breakthrough doesn't happen. Because we're not being authentic about where we actually are. We're just projecting like, no, everything's good. You know, everything's fine. This is how I know two things. This is the two giveaways in a man's life when I know something is really jacked up in their life is I'm fine and it's no big deal. If a man says those words to me, I'm like, we're going to have a conversation because I know that it's wherever they said that it's, it's not a big deal. That's a big deal. And for me, I'm going in worship music and in breakthrough and in warfare. The first step is admitting where you are, even and especially most especially if you don't want to be there. Mm. It's admitting it. It's not not just telling on yourself, but being vulnerable. And in that place of vulnerability, worship and breakthrough starts to come when I declare who he is despite my experience so good i mean the bible says confess with your mouth your sins and you will be saved and healed so um and again it's not it's not identifying like that's who you are but it's being honest that that's what you're feeling and then you release that and and you know, that's the prayer of shadrach meshach and abednego right like yeah. like uh today we're probably gonna die yeah you know but the, or he, i love how he says it Today, the Lord will deliver us from your hand. Come on. But even if he doesn't, he doesn't. Yeah. let it be known today, O King, that we did not bow before you. Come Dude, on. that's a great song. That is the song. Like, he's going to deliver me from this situation I'm in. But even if he doesn't, 
We will not bow to the circumstance. We won't bow to the circumstance. We won't bow to the situation because of who he is. And then, this is the best part, and then they had to go into the furnace before he showed up. So good. Are we willing to trust all the way into the furnace, or do we want him to to deliver us on the outside? Mm. We got to get into the fire if we actually want to see the breakthrough. So good. So good. Jake, we have a few more minutes. I know we've kind of gone overboard and I want you to pray for the people. But let, let me let me ask you, what what are the the three most difficult things you have uh, broken through? Uh, now, that's a loaded question. And, uh, you know, and of course, you could say, you know, let, let me guess or I might be prophetic. Maybe one of them is in your marriage. Right. But but uh, but what are, what are the top three things you have had to break through? Um, I would say the three things or, or, or you felt the most amount of warfare against you. Yeah. I mean, I think number one is my identity. Genuinely. I wrote the anthem. I am royalty. I have destiny. I've been set free. I'm going to shape history. I, I wrote that really from a place inside of me needing to hear that. That's why it's authentic when I sing it because it, I still need that. Like identity and insecurity are still a huge thing for me. Like I have to look him in the eyes and be reminded of my sonship and who I am in him every time I do anything still to this day. And I hope that never ends. I'll probably know I'm in a bad place if I don't need that. That required a massive amount of worship, uh, of warfare. And a ma- I've seen tons of warfare around that and required tons of breakthrough in my life. Dealing with healing and disappointment with Geneva has been massive. You know, I've seen tons of people get healed and I have a daughter that doesn't walk. So there's tons of warfare around that when it comes to what does that mean? Not just the, because some people are like, oh, that's a theological issue. No, it is absolutely a warfare issue because it's a warfare. Am I going to let the circumstance dictate what I believe? Yeah. And then with my marriage, like where Nikki and I could not be more different human beings, but by yielding to her perspective and her wisdom, I become the man that I'm supposed to become. So there's always warfare around it, trying to get us to pull apart and pull in different directions. And it is a constant thing in those three areas. Those like there are winter, spring, summer and fall in those three areas consistently throughout my life. Wow, bro. Um, I feel like we got to do an e-course together or something like, you know, because <laughs> you just you just have so much. And like I want to bring Steve Swanson. He's a great friend. And then Eddie awesome. James. And oh, I, I, I want to have all three of you like, let's just have a conversation and just <laughs> that will be so good. They have beautiful perspectives, too. I really respect those guys. So to be able to be in a room and have that conversation could be really powerful. That would be so great. Man, Jake, um, listen. You're going to be with us in Orange County, California this week. Open heavens, power, and glory. You, me, Evangelist John Ramirez, ex-Satanist. I mean, this guy, he's a general in deliverance, and he's really been a pioneer in that realm. Uh, What are you expecting? You know, let's invite the people. We still have some space left. They can register online, wherever they're watching. You're going to be preaching Thursday. This Thursday, you're going to be preaching and leading worship. It's going to be awesome. Talk to us. Hey, seriously, if you guys can get there, this is one of my favorite, like being able to be down in Orange County with this crew. It's always done exceptionally well. It is always cared for in the most beautiful way. So there's like the conference side of it, which is like, I I just know when I show up to a space like that, I just want to know that the crew that I'm going to be with is going to take care of the people that show up. And this crew does that. They are going to love you well. They're going to just, they're going to go above and beyond to care for you when you come, which I just love that. They're going to minister to you. You're going to be blessed. But at, at, in Orange County specifically this week, on top of that, as I just know that this weekend is marked for breakthrough. Like there is a significant amount of like, and I, I love the online stuff. And if you're living out of the country and you're living in another state, totally get it. But if you can get in the room, like sometimes it just means like that is your intercession is taking the risk and sacrificing just to get in the room. Like there's something a breakthrough, just paying the cost to get in the space. And so I would highly recommend just getting there. We're gonna go after it all weekend. So it's gonna be just like, I mean, we're doing a we're doing like a, a panel again, which was so good last time. That was it's just awesome to hear those like different perspectives in the same space. So just get there. If you guys can make it happen, sacrifice, get in the room and see what God does. 
Wow, so good. Jake, we love you, man. Um, can you release a prayer of, of blessing and breakthrough yeah. uh, just over our audience here? Come on, everybody. I want you to lift up your hands and uh, receive from this vessel. Come on, Lord, we just pray right now for everybody that's in the midst of warfare. They're in a winter season. God, for those that are in a fall and winter season where it just feels like, is this ever going to end? The, fall, the winter has been going on for seven years, eight years, nine years. All I know is I can, I just, well, all I want you to receive from this conversation and from God's heart is winter doesn't last forever. This, these seasons and circumstances do not have authority over his character, who he is, what he said, not just in eternity, but over your life specifically, that you were made uniquely and designed beautifully in the right place at the right time in all of human history to bring him the most glory. There is nothing so broken or so far gone that God can't redeem it with one oh. word. So we're asking, what is the word over them that will bring? breakthrough. We ask for it to come right now, even this weekend. We ask for the word to come this weekend in such a way chains would fall off that had been on for years because the right word in the right season was brought to bring radical transformation so that it could never be transferred to those who come after us. And I bless every single person within the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, we ask for blessing, oil to run down their heads in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. People of God, let's give it up for Jake Hamilton. Follow him on Instagram. That's where uh, a lot of your new content is coming out, yeah. right? Yeah, we got it. We got it on Instagram, TikTok. We're hitting a lot too. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. So check it out. Come on, guys. Let's give it up for the man of God, Jake Hamilton. God bless you, my friend. Love you. Can't wait to see you this week. Can't wait. It's gonna be a good time. Come on, brother. Bless you. Aloha. Everybody, let's give it up for the man of God, Jake Hamilton. Wow, wow, wow. This brother, just always so authentic, so pure, passionate. It's real. You want to be around real people. And just like you said, which I've said for years, authenticity breeds authority. And uh, if you want to be moving in power, you have to be real to yourself. And you have to be genuine. You have to be uh, pure to the Lord, pure before God. Uh uh, guys, uh, this week, open heaven's power and glory. Hey, listen, if you were blessed, I want to open up a time for you to sow a seed. Amen. I'll, I want to open up a time to sow a seed uh, because who knows your seed will break through atmospheres, your, your seed. And a lot of times, even for myself, whenever I'm in a drought, I like to bless people. If I'm feeling funky, I'm feeling, you know, a little sad. I like to bless people. I like to go out of my way and do something nice. And this is a moment for you to bless the Lord and to bless this ministry and uh, to sow into your breakthrough. Amen. So as you sow in this moment, we're going to put up the link and the ways for you to give. But if you're real, uh, if you were, if you really enjoyed this, uh, you know, let's bless the man of God. Let's bless his ministry. And uh, let's give back. Amen. And as you sow in this moment, I want you to hashtag breakthrough. Amen. Hashtag breakthrough. Because breakthrough is in the air. And I'm telling you, friends, wow, this week is going to be awesome. It's going to be tremendous. So you don't want to miss it. But as you sow, I want you to hashtag breakthrough. Amen. I want you to hashtag breakthrough. Shakarabata. Glory to God. And Brother Jake, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I have a few more announcements, so I'm going to be here for five minutes. You're free to go, free to stay. It's up to you, my friend. Love you, man. But uh, if you were blessed by the brother, the brave heart, Jake Hamilton, I want you to hashtag breakthrough as you sow and as you give. Amen. Thank you, Melissa, Kristen. Glory to God. Yeah, I feel like, Melissa, I know we were talking yesterday, but I feel like maybe you, no, me, Charlie, and Jake, we should do a conference in Phoenix. Me, you know, that would be super fun. Abundance, God bless you. Thank you, Laura, God bless you. Did you guys enjoy this broadcast today? It's so beautiful. Purity. Genuineness, authentic, it's beautiful, right? It's rare these days, unfortunately. Carolyn, bless you. Sherry, bless you. DC, bless you. 
Hallelujah. Shara Hallelujah. So into the atmosphere of breakthrough. If you're blessed today, amen. By the one and only worship leader extraordinaire, Jake Hamilton. Hallelujah. Hashtag breakthrough. Amen, Sylvia. Dee Dee, bless you. God bless you, Leo Bong Teledi on YouTube. Hallelujah. So into this breakthrough, my friends, I'm going to leave it open for another 30 seconds before we go on to our next announcements. Amen, Leobon. God bless you. Shata Rabarabapa Sata. Praise the Lord. Hashtag breakthrough is so bless the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Margaret Kay. God bless you, Pastor Sharon. Praise God. Well, friends, praise God. Thank you, everybody, for sewing. And listen, please give this broadcast a share there was a lot of wonderful gems that jay Hamilton shared beautiful precious gems um guys uh let's go to some quick announcements here um of course you can follow me here on facebook youtube uh instagram tiktok we have different content on all platforms uh but this week open heavens power and glory god bless you yolanda open heavens power and glory Consider joining, guys. Fly in, drive in. It's going to be life-changing. Super, super life-changing. Myself, Evangelist John Ramirez, and Jake Hamilton. Wow. Triple threat, my friends. Triple threat. Uh, that's going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And um, we still do have some VIP seats opened. Amen. The VIP on Friday, which is an exclusive session, just for VIP holders. It's going to be all of the speakers, myself, John Ramirez, and Jake. And we're going to do a panel. And it's going to be so powerful, life-changing. So, um, or you could join us online. Join us online, friends. And uh, if you're joining or coming, I want to say I'm coming or I'm joining. God bless you, Ella Ware. God bless you. Good to see you, Pastor Steve, Gateway Church. But if you're joining or coming, I want you to comment, I'm joining or I'm coming. Amen. You don't want to miss out on that. Even if you want to join online, you must register. You must register. Chanel, bless you. TC, bless you. Thank you, Lord. Um, after this week, I'm going to be in Arizona, friends. Woo! I can't wait. I'm going to be in Arizona. Um, I will <clears throat> be ministering at House Fires on Wednesday. <clears throat> and then I'm also uh, going to be ministering with my good friend, Prophet Jesse Shab, Arizona, Revival Glory. So. I'm going to be in the Phoenix area from May, the first week of May, from May 3 to May 6. So come and be a part of it, my friends. Also, the week after, I'm back in Pennsylvania. So if you're in the East Coast, come and see me. This is Awaken a Harvest 3.0, our third week of revival in Pennsylvania. Jesus. Wow. God has been moving very powerfully. 
in these meetings. So if you're in the East Coast, come and see me, my friends. Come and see me and be a part of what we're doing in the East Coast. Amen. Um, also, guys, I need you to pray with me. Will you pray with me? Okay. We have our big mission this year. We have our big mission this year. Route 66 revival. The whole month of June, we are doing 10 revivals along Highway 66, along Route 66. We're doing one month of tent revivals from Chicago to St. Louis, Kansas City, Tulsa, uh, Amarillo, Albuquerque, Flagstaff, Los Angeles, eight cities doing tent revivals the whole month of June. Will you pray about joining? Will you consider joining and being a part of the new breed? Amen. And you can do so at Route66Revival.us. But we're looking for people to join us for a week or for the whole month or maybe even for a few days per city. But these 10 revivals are going to be incredible. Amen. So you're going to be hearing me talk a lot more about Route 66 Revival in the next few weeks. Praise God. And as well, I'm going to Israel. Have you ever been to Israel? Do you want to join me in Israel? Guys, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same when you go to the land that Jesus walked on. You go to the land of the Bible. So I want to invite you to join me in going to Israel. And I'm telling you, friends, if you've never gone, you have to. This is a have-to trip. Once in a lifetime. Before we go to the new Israel, before we become new Israel. But you have to go, friends. You have to go. Amen. <clears throat> and listen, friends, I have a group mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. I would love to mentor you. I would love to walk with you, pour into you. Uh, and I believe in the power of mentorship and discipleship. If you're looking for cover, if you're looking for impartation, join my online group mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. What is included if you join we have at least two private Zooms every month. And as well, you get to join a private Telegram group where there's a lot of activity, there's a lot of love, great community. And you get to connect with other world changers. And as well, of course, there's discounts and for e-courses, our events, and as well, you're more connected to me. So I would love to see you. It's still not too late for you to join this group mentorship. It's life-changing, friends. It's life-changing. So, friends, I can't wait to see you soon. Thank you for joining here on YouTube and Facebook. Hallelujah. When are you coming to the Netherlands? I don't know. I have never ministered in Europe before. When the right open door opens and when God tells me, Kim Amsterdam, amen, it always has to be the right one. Thank you, uh, Lucia Hanius, for becoming a member on YouTube. Thanks so much. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Well, friends, I can't wait to see you this week. Wow, wow, wow. This week, Open Heavens, Power and Glory. Don't miss it. Register online. Drive in, friends. Be a part of the VIP. Like Jake said, get in the room. What did the, what did the friends of the lame man do? They did everything they could to get their friend in the room. So they opened up the roof. And brought him in. Get in the room. Whatever you need to do, your breakthrough is there. Amen. Well, friends, God bless you. Love you. Let's give it up for Dolores. She's behind the scenes. We all love her. Amen. 
our great producer, CTO. Friends, love you. Happy Monday. I will see you soon. God bless.